I have the uh, honor to actually introduce Clayton Lau, who's the director of urology at City of Hope in Duarte, California. Um, Clayton, as many of you know, is a, a world expert in millennium invasive surgeries, performed over 3,500 robotic surgeries, also very prolific with research, um, has had an R01 and, and has had uh, several papers published, chapters as well. Probably the most important distinction about Clayton is he survived Tim Wilson, which is a real challenge. Um, but I want to um, inter uh, have Clayton come up and he's gonna give us uh, his perspective and experience with uh, the digital surgery platform for Medtronic. Clayton? I wanna thank Norris and Jim uh, and John Davis uh, for this kind invite. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little about touch surgery. Um, and I've had the, the pleasure of using this for a few months now. So the title of the talk is Unlocking the Power of Surgical Vi Video. And I'm broken up into the value of surgical video, um, talk about touch surgery itself, and training experience that I have. I'd like to introduce Ed uh, Chang. He's one of my fellows trained at University of Washington. I want to give his perspective as someone new to learning with this platform. So we're all trying to hone our skills. That's why we go to these meetings and we learn new techniques, want to get to perform better, more efficiently, less compli complications. And similar to surgeons and similar to athletes, we look at video. We look at things preoperatively, postoperatively. We use it for education. We use it for coaching uh, and skill improvement. Um, I had the pleasure of you know, being Dr. Wilson's uh, fellow. He wouldn't say I was probably one of the worst fellows, but I think he was just poking at me. But when I started a fellowship in 2005, we only had to get videos via the C CDRWs, if you guys had to kind of date me. Then it transitioned to USB keys and also portable hard drives. And now we can have videos go up to the cloud. So this is great because not only can you, it automatically gets to the cloud, but you can actually simplify the workflow looking through videos. You can categorize them by type of procedures. You can collaborate with other people that are in the same network, uh, the touch surgery network. And you can look at data and has built an AI looking at data in terms of timing and also efficiency. So we started uh, the touch surgery system back in May of last year. We had three operating rooms or three robots that were outfitted. Um, we had five robots, one was SP, but we put them on three uh, XIs. We had about 16 surgeons, uh, all services use it, and had about a little over 300 videos that were uploaded. And of note, you can see, and it was mostly the urology fellows, um, they were shared many a times, and there are a lot of views. So you can actually track if a fellow or somebody actually views those videos. The system's pretty simple. It's a DS1 computer, you actually can see it here. It looks like uh, an Apple TV or a wireless router. Uh, that's connected to the, the CRT, essentially. Then you have this remote, it uh, looks like a t uh, basically a telephone that controls everything. This actually can be connected to not only the robot, but you can actually, if you wanted to watch someone uh, do a whole lap uh, or a laparoscopic surgery, you can actually record that also. With that, within that, you can actually, it goes to the app um, on your phone or your computer and it has data in there where you can scroll through. You can share it to uh, anyone within the network uh, within med, with that are signed up with touch surgery and that you authorize. This is kind of a real-time picture. Um, uh, this is uh, my settings here, but you can actually see the little, the little DS1 computer back there, it's tiny. Um, and actually, this is actually a picture of the, the cell phone. And there, you can actually just, you don't, you type in the type of procedure um, and add any edits in there and just start, and to start the recording, you just press the button and end it, you have to stop it. And what, why is this great? Because it's, you know, if many of us have, you know, tried to record videos and it takes about 10, 20 minutes to wait for that case to record, sometimes there's security issues where it doesn't work or, you know, the uh, you know, portable hard drive breaks or you lose it. So this is, makes it really quick, it's secure, uh, and you know, it makes it easy for fellows and faculty to get these, these videos. It's also secure, there's, uh, there's no data information on the patients. Uh, in addition, when the scope comes out, everything's blurred, um, so you don't see any staff um, information or pictures of them. And at the end with AI, it actually has procedural uh, steps that are benchmarked. You can benchmark it to historical cases over time. 
So I just wanted to show, like, when this is a case that I did uh, in January, and I can show the video here, and this is what it looks like. It almost looks, looks like a YouTube video, but essentially has all the things that you can go from starting it and stopping it, um, moving it forward. You can just drag the cursor in the bottom to the specific points. Um, you can scribble on it, and you actually see this little squiggle here. You can actually draw on there when you're teaching. Um, so you're, if you're with a fellow sitting down at a computer, uh, you can actually draw uh, certain points uh, if you want. Onto the right, you can actually see, you can click on the top part, you can see the workflow and the analytics. What a, the AI does is actually breaks the cases down, the, the time it takes uh, and where it's at. Here's a case that I did, it's a prostatectomy with an extended lift node dissection. And with that, you can look at the analytics by clicking analytics, but it, it'll show you the time it takes, an actual time that actually did the surgery, then your historical controls that you've done on all the cases that were reported. And this is important, I think, for, for many of us that you know, want to look at efficiency. Um, and uh, also we can, you know, we can look at to see how much you can compare to how long it takes um, a fellow versus somebody else to do or you know, one attending to another. So, um, but it's kind of data that we can see there. And with that, actually, I'll break down the, um, the steps into the graphs for time. So I wanted to, um, you know, I've used this with my trainees. We have uh, three to four fellows a year, and they love this application. They've all come from various programs. Um, and I use this um, to have them prep by looking at videos beforehand, um, do, you know, kind of post-surgical debriefs. Um, and also, if there are certain areas where they actually have difficulty or need more extra help, we kind of can go to those areas and they can, I can assign them a specific couple of cases and go over those specific steps. So it's a great way, an efficient way of training. Um, in addition, you can uh, download these videos if you wanted to use it for you know, any sort of presentation. Um, and also, if there's like an M&M you want to use, you can put it, you know, take it to clip in the area where you actually wanted to use it for you know, an M&M within our own division. So I brought up Ed Chang, who is one of our fellows, um, and wanted to kind of um, have him speak a little about, um, Ed, can you, does it work there? Okay, great, you can stay there. So Ed, you know, is coming from University of Washington, you know, they do a lot, quite a bit of um, robotic surgery there, anything left over that Jim leaves on the table in Seattle. Um, but um, I wanted to get his perspective um, and, and using it for, as a training platform. So um, when I was interviewing for fellowship at City of Hope, uh, one of the kind of things that they recruit during recruitment, they said was uh, we use surgery and we do surgical coaching through video. And I think um, just thinking about my experience at, um, during residency, I felt like that was going to be a very valuable tool because in residency we recorded video, but we had an old platform. And to be honest, I didn't watch that much video and my attending was going to review video with me. So um, a lot of the improvement kind of came on the fly, but so far during fellowship, uh, I sit with Dr. Sit down with Dr. Lau or Dr. Yu, our program director, or uh, our different faculty. And after cases, or even you know up to a week after a case, we'll talk about the case while we're watching the video and talk about specific things we can improve. And I think that's really changed my perspective on how to approach different cases. You know where my hand should be during the case um, and we get to pause the video and talk about, you know, the kind of theoretical concepts while having that image right in front of me. Um, I think that relationship uh, and being able to watch video in that way has really um, changed the way I think about how I operate. And then in, in addition, um, I have two co-fellows and we can watch a video together. And so actually we use touch surgery to coach each other, watch each other's videos <clears throat> in a very non-judgmental way. Um, and uh, that's actually helped a lot because we're learning and teaching uh, one another and we're trying to teach each other how Dr. Lau does his cystectomy or prostatectomy. And then I would say one of the kind of biggest game changers is what Dr. Lau mentioned in terms of downloading video because uh, it actually makes um, creating a surgical video so much easier. Uh, when I was making my video for this uh, conference, I had to use some of the old platform because uh, most of it was on the SP, um, and we don't, our SP is not connected to the system yet, and so I had to go to four different ORs and plug in my USB and get all that. Uh, but when I make 
uh, videos off of touch surgery. You just log in, download, you have a complete clip. It's not a bunch of you know, segmented clips in different uh, folders. And I think that really makes it so much more accessible and it makes it easier to share video and um, you know, submit videos to presentations and conferences. And Ed, so uh, one thing, what do you usually use touch surgery on? Do you use your phone or your computer or what's, what do you usually, where your workflow? So you're preparing. Yeah, I, I use it on both. Um, you know, it's nice to have it on your phone because, you know, sometimes in between cases or before a case, I'll just review something real quick. Um, it takes like five to 10 minutes. I'll just go to the portion that I want to take a look at and I could watch it easily on my phone. Um, if I want to uh, watch a case for a more extended period of time, more than like 20 minutes or so, I'll usually watch it on my laptop. But I think both platforms end up working out pretty well. I had a question, Clayton. Sure. Yeah. So, um, how is City of Hope uh, handling the discoverability of these videos? As far as um, you know, you mentioned Eminem. So, yeah. um, what's is there been a policy established, or how do you guys handle that? We, yeah. So we, you know, obviously have a thorough contract with you know with uh, Medtronic, but all the information. That's from the on the patient. There's no identifiable um, part that's to the specific individual patient, so it's been fine for for my work. Um, you know, for us, we actually just go back to the date of surgery. That's the only way we figure out which case it was. Um, but it hasn't been an issue um, for our institution. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of places are looking at data capture as a quality measure, and if it's quality measure, then that kind of protects it from, from uh, sources that might see, uh, you know, uses of this that may, you know, legal, legal use. Correct, yeah. correct, yeah. And it's only, um, you can only, it's really, uh, the video only goes back to the, to the owner, quote unquote, and only can be shared with uh, people that they decide to share with within the touch surgery network. So for me right now, there is all the faculty that I have within my work at City of Hope and also my fellows that I share it with. Can, can you speak a little bit to the, the editing function on, on, the, on the application? Yeah, sure. So that's in its infancy. So right now you can download um, the whole video right now. But down the road, it's going to be able to be a situation where, um, and if I've been talked with uh, Medtronic, they're going to have you able to edit clips and take out clips like iMovie within. Mm -hmm. So they're working on that. So right now you're taking the whole video and then putting it in another software for, yeah. for editing. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Clayton? Well, I'm Clayton, really thank. Oh, please, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does not. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Yeah. No. Yeah, John. Yeah, it's a good question. So um, it's basically subscription based. So there's a fee that you pay for the year, um, and it's for one unit. That unit you know, can be moved, but we typically keep it um, with, at the robots. So for instance, like MD Anderson, let's say you have eight robots. So um, you would probably purchase eight of them, um, or if they're, you know, you, most of the time you only use four, I would purchase four and put them on the robots. We have five robots, so we're buying, uh, we're s subscribing to a five, robot, uh, five machines. We did trial with three because that's what they gave us, so we just took it, you know, but I've, it was actually a detriment because of the fact that it's, it's so busy sometimes that some of those other robots are being used um, and there's a, many other cases going. So for anyone that's you know has a busy practice, you want to make sure that you have one on your the robot or the, all the robots if you can do it. But you can actually use it for laparoscopy or cysto cases too. It does. And it's really small. Yeah. And it's easy to use. It's um, the har Honestly, the hardest part is actually, and I think they're working on it, is knowing when to stop it. So sometimes like they'll have the, they won't stop it until like this, you know, they're closed with the skin. So you have to tell them to turn it off at a specific point. Similar to like if you're hard recording it. I'm sorry? It, it, yes. Yeah, the question um, Dr. Linhan says is there AI. So it, it is, there's AI built into certain procedure types where they will uh, break down the steps um, to, the, to these operations, namely right now for urology, what they have is for prostatectomy, 
um, and also for partial nephrectomies. So uh, when you bring this in, in order for it to connect to the cloud, you have to get your IT people involved in the, in the hospital to try to yeah. make that happen? Yeah, it's not, it's not too difficult, uh, honestly. There's, right now, actually, it has to be hardwired um, to the wall, um, but it, wasn't, it hasn't been an issue. Okay. And the, the time it takes to upload, it's been shortened. It used to be the, the time of the length of the surgery, but it's now about an hour or so for each surgery to be uploaded into the cloud. Dr. Dr. Lau, could I actually give an update to that? Sure. So we actually have uh, now a function where it's real time. So you're actually, it's gonna hit the cloud as soon as you walk out of the OR. That, that whole video will be ac accessible to you in your library. And you know, so thank you. If everyone has any questions, um, I'd be happy to kind of share my, my uh, even to show, show you guys at my table um, anytime. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you very much, Clayton. I really appreciate you guys coming and uh, presenting this.